We're looking now at how to control serious bleeding. Remember there's three types of bleed. There's capillary bleeding, just the uh, oozing of blood, venous bleeding where you get a consistent dark red blood and artery bleeding, arterial bleeds where you get the blood is actually pumping out. Now, it might not be literally spurting out of the wound but you can actually look at it and you can actually see a pulse of blood coming out of the arm. So what we've got here is a, a serious cut. We're going to look at how to actually treat it. The first thing you need to do with any type of uh, bleed like this is make sure you've got your gloves on and you've got to make sure that the scene is safe. You don't want to be hurt by whatever's hurt the patient. So make sure you do a proper scene assessment as soon as you walk up. Make sure you're safe. Make sure you've got your first aid kit to hand. Uh, if you need to, also, as soon as you get there, make sure you've got someone else going for the emergency services or you're activating any in-house uh, workplace uh, emergency plans. So, on the first aid, may I help you? Um, yeah, I've just got my arm caught in one of the machines. Right. Okay, can you take your other hand and place it straight over? And now just lift your arm up. What's happening here is we're applying direct pressure. Now, I've not actually touched it yet. So you're applying direct pressure. If you put direct pressure onto a wound, you can reduce the bleeding. By lifting the arm above the heart, we can actually also reduce the amount of blood flow. So just by doing this, the actual blood flow can be reduced. Direct pressure, elevation. What we're going to do now is put on a um, dressing, and these dressings are the standard ones that come in an HSC first aid kit. And what you've then got is a dressing that's all sealed up. You can just give it a little squeeze. If no air comes out of the dressing, you know that dressing is um, okay. All dressings would have a date on them, so you, know, you should always make sure that everything's in date. So with these ones, just tear it open, take the dressing out. What you need to do to start with is just undo the dressing, and then you'll see a pad. Now this pad is what actually goes over the wound. So we've got the, dress, the bandage on this side and the pad here, so this is what will touch the wound. The idea of this pad is it, will apply, it applies the pressure onto the um, cut itself, the bandage will hold it in place, this won't stick, so we're not having problems with it actually sticking onto the wound. Um, and then hopefully, with the pressure of the dressing, it means we can take the hand away and we can keep the bleeding to a minimum. So to start with, you just want to place it over the cut. So we just take your hand away for a second. Okay, keep your arm up. With the tail of the dressing, if you just bring that round a couple of times, and just, just pop it into the hand, if you just hold that for me, it just gets it out of the way. What we need to do then is apply the bandage distally and distally means furthest away from the heart. The reason we do this way is we don't want to trap any blood on the hand side. We want to make sure that there's a minimal amount of blood there. So we always start furthest away from the heart. So we just apply the dressing round. Now it is a pressure dressing. We do need to apply pressure, but we don't want to put it over tight. Um, we don't use things like tourniquets. We don't want to actually cut off the circulation. So apply the dressing round. Is that okay? Not too tight? Once you got to the end, you can come back to the initial part, just bring that round and then tie it off. And we're tying it off away from the actual cut. We don't want to actually put the knot right over the top of the cut because that's going to cause a lot more pain. And also when you have a knot over a cut, they can actually open the wound up. So you can just tie that off and then that will keep the pressure onto the wound. Now you want to make sure that the dressing is not too tight. And what we do that is capillary refill. So we'll squeeze the nail, we squeeze it for about five seconds and let go. What would happen then is the, the nail will go white and then it will go back to its normal colour, usually in around about two seconds. That will prove that the dressing is not too tight and there's still blood flow going through because we do want to keep the blood flow going around the whole time. Next thing we need to think about is if the blood is coming through the dressing, what do we do next? If you start looking at the wound and you see that there's actually blood coming through here, then you would need to consider then putting another dressing on top. So, so we just take literally another one of these dressings, pop it straight over the top, put the bandage on exactly the same way. Once we put two dressings on and we still see blood coming through, this is where you need to do a little bit of common sense. If the blood is coming through the second dressing and it's just a little bit and you think basically it stopped the bleeding, it's just oozed a little bit through, then that's fine. If it seems that this dressing is completely inefficient and the blood is still coming through um, quite strongly, what we need to do is we need to take this off and start again. Now again, a little bit of common sense. When you actually just cut that off, you can use um, scissors and just literally cut the dressing off, or undo the knot, um, take the dressing off and then put another one on. Now if the dressing pad itself is still stuck onto the wound and you just peel that straight off, 
there is a chance you're just going to open the cut up even more. So maybe just think about it. Again, common sense. If you think that pad is okay left on, well then just leave it on. Then you put another dressing over the top. Now, when we're starting putting second dressings onto a cut like this, it is a serious um, cut. So we need to obviously activate the emergency medical services. Any cut like this, we'd have to get into the hospital. But um, if we're starting to get blood coming through dressings, we've got ourselves a serious bleed. Other concerns we could have right now are um, the patient going into shock. So the whole time you want to keep talking. So make sure that um, there's no problems with sickness or dizziness or feeling unwell or a little bit lightheaded. If there was, just guide the patient onto the floor, lay them down, we can elevate their legs and the arm we can just literally hold up. With the arm here, um, obviously it's going to be uncomfortable leaving it here for any uh, length of time, particularly when transporting to the hospital or even waiting for the paramedics. So what we can do is then put the arm into a sling. Now, placing the arm into a sling is, is quite straightforward. Uh, if you haven't got a sling to hand, you don't really need it. You could just pop it inside a shirt so it's just held there, or maybe even just get the patient to hold the arm up in this position. The idea is that the cut is now raised um, away as, as high as we can. The blood flow will be restricted and the arm is kept in a position where it's safe. If we are using a sling, to start with, you just take your hand and pop it up onto your shoulder, up here. That's it, yes, just round onto there to support your elbow. With the slings themselves, there are different types of sling. Now we have the standard cloth ones or these. Now these are the ones more common in first aid kits. This material is not the cotton, it's harder to work with. It's a single use um, product and uh, these slings, they are functional, but they are not that strong. If we're just gonna be putting an arm into a sling, it doesn't really matter. You know, we can use this quite easily. Um, so it depends which one you have. Most of the ones will be this type of material. I'll just show you how to do it with the cotton type. The technique is identical. With the slings themselves, you open them up to start with and you'll see there's one 90 degree corner and then 45 degree corners. And the idea is the 90 degree corner goes by the elbow. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this and it's something you can always practice. Uh, one way is just to hold onto the 90 degree corner and tie a knot in it. Once we've got the knot into the 90 degree corner, then we can take the sling itself and um, just hold it over the wound, over the arm. Take your hand away now. And then from there, we can just bring it around, tucking it underneath the hand. Okay, now put your hand back up. And if you just leave a thumb out, because we can always then check for capillary refill later on, just to make sure the dressing's not on too tight. It's tucked underneath the hand, so it actually holds the hand in place. And then at the back, just tie it into a knot. Now we're not tying that too tight, just hold it into place. We can check through here. We can check that the, the arm is supported well. If you just relax your arm now. And now the arm is relaxed. Because the arm is injured, it's gonna ache, it's gonna hurt, and the arm's now held nice and tidily. The other way of putting the sling on, this method is probably the quickest and easiest to do, but uh, if not, you can just pop the sling on without tying a knot in it first by just laying the sling over and it runs along the line of the hand. Just take the tail of it underneath the arm. Here again, just tucking it underneath the hand, leaving the thumb up. Tie it off in a, a knot at the back. And the piece by the elbow, what we can do with this is just twist it off and you can tie a knot in it or you can just take that twist and just tuck it inside and then that will support the hand nice and easily. Now with serious bleeding, pressure dressings, popping it in a sling, it's a great way of stopping bleeding. What we did there is demonstrate it on an arm. If it was on the leg, we'd do exactly the same, just lay the patient down and pop the dressing on. If it's on the main torso of the body, we might not be able to wrap a bandage around. So what we do then is apply the pad directly and keep the pressure on with our gloved hands. Now there might be some other things about the cuts you might notice, if it's a chest area, you might see very, very bright red, slightly bubbly blood. This could indicate that there's a damage to the lungs. This is a very, very serious medical condition. Again, we need to try and seal it over. If you do seal it over, you could seal it with a piece of plastic, but you only seal it around three sides. Now this is really taking first aid onto the next level. Uh, so basically just be aware that if there is damage to the chest and the lungs, the blood would be bright red and bubbly and again you need to call the emergency service and get guidance from them as soon as possible. 
The other way can be of cutting the blood coming out from a limb could be use of pressure points. Now, if blood is still pumping through and you cannot stop it, then we don't use tourniquets, and tourniquets are a strap that goes around and cuts off all the circulation. What we do do is using a pressure point. And the pressure point is inside here on the upside of the arm. And uh, what it is, is where a, a main artery goes over bone. So if you apply hard pressure in here, then you will cut off the circulation just through that main artery. So you're not cutting all the venous return, you're just cutting off the worst of it. So by applying pressure there, cuts the bleeding down. Now don't just let go suddenly because that will just force through, but it's a good way of controlling bleeding. In addition to that, you can do exactly the same by popping your fist straight into the top of your leg, and again, that will actually cut the circulation inside of a, a bad cut to the leg. Now these pressure points are used in very serious emergencies to cut bleeding down. They're not a standard first aid if you just cut yourself, basically. It's only if these dressings do not work, then consider using indirect pressure and if you're dealing with cuts like that level, this is very, very serious. This person's going to lose a lot of blood very quickly. And you've got to suspect shock. You must have them laying down. And you also must make sure the emergency medical services know that this is a very serious, life-threatening cut.